You're watching Ned the Dead and Doc Moreau. Check out their stuff at nedthedead.com. The Dead, the Dead show. They say, hey, Dad, give me 10 second walk in. And like, I have two feet to walk. So it's kind of like walking with your grandma at the store. <laughs> Where you keep looking, come on, grandma, come on. I love you, but come on. You know how that is. That is never that much fun. Tell you what, you finally get to uh, whatever, to, uh, you know, Manipula or whatever the stories you're going to, whatever that is. All right, everybody, we've got Prisoners of the Lost Universe. It's our fabulous movie. And to tell us more, to tell us everything, to give us the real deal, it's Doc Burrow's movie lore. Roll it, Doc, or what? Ah, uh, the 80s. Big hair, the waning days of disco, and lots of bad special effects. Prisoners of the Lost Universe stars Richard Hatch, Apollo from the original Battlestar Galactica. And he's quick to say, not the gay naked Richard Hatch who won the first season of Survivor. He also followed Michael Douglas on the streets of San Francisco. And for his passion to revive Battlestar Galactica, he was even given a recurring role in the recent sci-fi channel, BSG Reboot. The villain is played by John Saxon, who starred with Bruce Lee in Enter the Dragon, and guest starred on everything from Gunsmoke and Bonanza and the Bold Ones to The Six Million Dollar Man and Dynasty, but never Star Trek. Although Gene Roddenberry did cast him in his sci-fi TV pilot, Planet Earth. Now our heroine is played by sexy Kay Lenz, the first movie star I remember seeing topless. Hey, a guy remembers those things. Got her first break from Clint Eastwood in his movie Breezy, and is fondly remembered for that early MTV music video of Rod Stewart's Infatuation. You know, I always thought she bore a resemblance to Susan Day, the TV sister of David Cassidy and the Partridge family. Well, come to find out, for six years, Kay Lenz was married to David Cassidy. As Ned would say, what's that all about? The lore is a funny thing, people. Ned?
It's Doc Burrow's movie lore. He knows all, he says all, he does all. And then he repeats himself all night long. <laughs> you should see what it's like. We're with him. All right, everybody, we're going to go see Prisoners of the Lost Universe. It's for you and me to enjoy like the pals we are. Let's go, roll it faster. <laughs> I guess this could prove Professor Grogan's theory, that you can put a snake to sleep with a high B-flat. But before any of your kids go and try it on your neighborhood rattlers, remember it may only work on snakes that like music. This is Carrie Madison inviting you to join me next week for some more curiosities of this weird and wacky world. Well, I guess that wraps it up, Ronnie. Hello. What? No, I was just leaving. I could be at Professor Hartman's laboratory in about two hours, give or take it. What do you mean the crew is going to be late? How late? An hour? What am I supposed to do with a mad scientist for an hour? <laughs> I'll pretend that you didn't say that. This is KKZ Los Angeles, the spot that's hot on your dial. A free five-year parts and labor warranty is a big deal. Who's doing that? Van Breedies? You bet. You get a free five-year parts and labor warranty on any Frigidaire washing machine. That is a big deal. Or get a free five-year parts and labor warranty with any Frigidaire refrigerator. Huge deal. And pay no interest until 2011. Best of the Valley and Best of the Bay with a guaranteed lowest price every day. Check us out at VanVreedies.com. Van Breedies, why shop anywhere else? News and views coming at you on the hour with an extended report on those earth tremors up Frisco Way. They're on their way here. <laughs> if they can beat the freeway traffic, you heard it first here where we make it happen. It's all coming at you. It's the first shock wave to hit the area, and this one reached 4.5 on the Richter scale. This is KKC Los Angeles News and Views. trying to prove, lady? You want to drive in a demolition derby? Go do it on a track. Funny. Very funny. I suppose you didn't notice. The rest of the world is having an earthquake. Look, you got two feet. One for the accelerator and one for the brake. Apollo! Uh, he used to say that to Starbuck all the time. Oh, God. This piece of equipment has seen me through two state championships, the defense of the interstate trophy, and cost me 40 bucks. Now look at it. What is it? What is it? It's a broken kendo sword. That's what it is. Looks like a bamboo stick. Well, since you're all right, I've got to go. Hey, don't let me detain you, lady. I mean, I'm fine. My truck is fine. My broken kendo stick is just fine. Everything's just fine, lady. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry. Uh, here. What's this? Well, it, it's for everything. Lady, I don't need your charity. Charity? This isn't charity. And 
Oh, stop calling me lady. I hate to be called lady. It's insulting and patronizing. Believe me, I can think of better words. I bet you can. It's because I'm a woman, isn't it? I mean, if I were a man, you were a man, I'd break Now that Starbucks says all the time to that hot chick that plays Starbucks now. Typical. Be violent. You want to see a violent male? Maybe you want to be treated like a child, taken across my knee and given a good spanking. Well, that Lauren Green used to say to him. You wouldn't dare. Try me, lady. Yes, I recognize you, Miss Madison, and I'm enchanted. Won't you come in, please? Wait a minute, isn't that steering wheel on the wrong side? He must have hit that embankment pretty hard. I dare say you're wondering why I, a serious dimensional physicist, should waste my valuable time on a television program which sensationalizes science. Well, at least you're brutally frank about it. I don't mean to be rude. But your program is precisely what I need to make those fools in the halls of science take my work seriously. Oh, sorry, I... I've become angry and I've become a very mad host. Can I get you something? No, thanks. Look, I'm sorry, but my camera crew have been delayed. Um, maybe you could go over exactly what it is you want us to film. Is this it? Uh, please, Miss Madison. The matter transmitter is a finely calibrated instrument. And you say you can send things through this machine into another dimension? Precisely. Perhaps if I were to show you what I mean. They said it was going to be a nice day. And now, in case you think we're some kind of magician, an object, some personal possession, if I may. The hard part is keeping his Commodore 64 from crashing. <laughs> Look, she thought it was a pretty crappy special effect, too. I saw it, but I still don't believe it. The objects are still there, but in another dimension. Another part of the universe we cannot see. I don't understand this. <laughs> Dr. Hartman, are you sure this is safe with all these tremors going on? Be quiet. Do you realize we are looking at a parallel world? Another dimension for the first time. You mean a world like ours? Why not? People are people wherever they exist. Perhaps technologies differ. My 
Don't you realize what this means? The ability to cross into another world. Dr. Hartman. Dr. Hartman? Uh, Blondie, <laughs> Dr. Hartman has left the building. thought you were Starbuck. Oh, my God, not you again. Well, look, it was your own fault creeping around like that. My fault. I come here looking for help, and I get mugged. What have I done to you, lady? You wipe out my truck, you cave in my skull, you... Break your bamboo stick. <laughs> Kendo sword. Sorry. <sighs> I'm Carrie. Carrie Madison. Dan Roebuck. I keep thinking I know you from someplace. I do a TV show. That's funny. He used to do a TV show. <laughs> the weird and the wacky. Mm -hmm. Now I know you. Hey, that show really is a pile of garbage. Aww. But you're good. I thought you looked thinner in the box. What is this place? It belongs to a Dr. Hartman. Where is he? He's gone. And I mean, he's really gone. What do you mean, really gone? There's no point. I know you won't believe me. Try me. Well, this machine transmits things into another world, another dimension. <clears throat> I told you you wouldn't believe me. Of course I believe you. Please go on. There was this accident. An accident. And he was standing right there. Standing right here. And then all of a sudden, he just disappeared. Like that. <laughs> Disappeared just like that. The Dead, the Dead Show. Doc Moreau, come on in, my friend. Slide yourself on in here. <laughs> what is up with you, boy? What have you been doing? I just stopped at the drive up. Why? What did you hear? Nothing <laughs> I've heard. I've heard some bad things. The young gentleman looked out the window and he said, Enjoy the rest of your evening, sir. Dead. And that's Little when did you, you know. What prescriptions were you getting? <laughs> Sorry, no, you didn't mean that drive up, right? Nowadays, that's funny, I'll tell you what. Could you imagine going through the drive through for Viagra? You know what I'm saying? What a, what a horrible thing oh, that would talking be. Talking in the clown's mouth right. would disturb me. No, I think the thought of driving up for Viagra, the drive through plus you're driving some wimpy vehicle and, you know, dressed kind of dumb, and, oh. you know, obviously, you know, that would be me. I'd go up and, hey, <laughs> here's your Viagra, sir. <laughs> you know, just like that deal. I'll tell you where they actually laugh at you in the vehicle. Because they know you ain't doing nothing until you come back about a half hour later with a crazy blue look in your eye. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Have you ever seen that? Here, look at me. Oh! oh! <laughs> you're slunking it out in the middle of the ring! And you a hard drive to the job! And Blue Bonnet Black is knocked off! And Black is knocked off? Sure, but you can press it right back on again. It's just part of the action with the world's only boxing robots, the Rock'em Sock'em Robots by Marks. Takes two managers to handle the fighters and lots of skill to win. With these control levers, you can keep your fighters in motion to duck punches. When you press this plunger, he throws a right uppercut. 
press the other plunger, and there's a left jam. Lots of exciting action and fun for everyone when the world's only boxing robots battle it out. The blue bomber's looking for an opening, and there it is. That's the end of round two. Just push the flying head back, and you're ready for round three. Boy, this is the greatest. You bet. The world's only boxing robots. Get the Rock'em Suck'em Robots by Mark. Hey, everybody, we're back at the Old Dead the Dead Show. What do you Have think, you Doc? noticed that you could go to Macville, and as long as the, the Philharmonic Orchestra starts playing, <laughs> it, you would be in another dimension. Dude, it is, it is so, the music is so huge. That's the first thing I noticed. You know, they went into that stupid transporter, and then the Star Wars music started, or whatever it is. It, it is just so gigantic. Oh. You see what I'm saying about bad special effects in the 80s? Oh, I know. Oh, I'm falling into the transporter. No, I don't. You know, next week, of course, oh. we got Warriors of the Wasteland, where the whole track is on a Casio, some little kid's Casio. In this movie, has a, you know, the Boston Pops, the uh, whatever Philharmonic all together in this giant soundtrack and then See, horrible acting. You don't need 3D. No. You just need a big orchestra. No, that's right. I agree. Because yeah. the big orchestra makes you feel almost like it's multidimensional. You know what I'm saying? It makes me feel almost multifaceted. You know what I'm saying? Like I got more than one thing on my mind, as we know, as a guy. I just got one thing on my mind. Let's, let's go find that. I must be dreaming this. Or I'm dead. And this is either heaven or hell. Well, heaven it isn't. So it must be hell. Only this doesn't look like Dallas. Dan Robach! That's supposed to be quicksand? <laughs> More like stupid sand. He forgot all he had to do was stand <laughs> up. Or cheap sand, because they couldn't afford to dig a deeper hole. <laughs> Now, what are those things? Ain't it obvious? They're flashers. <laughs> Don't panic. Slowly back away. Now what? Run like hell. Keep running! I'm running! I'm running! <laughs> Hang on! Hang on! Oh, 
They give me a headache. You want a headache? Just pick up. Oh. What's going on? Maybe it's some sort of strange ritual. <laughs> about grappling iron. I'm going to pitch it up there, and with luck, it will hook onto something, and then you and I can chinny up the beanstalk. And what if the giant is up there and chops down the beanstalk? What then? I don't like the way those pint-sized midgets committed suicide in installments. Besides, whatever did it could still be up there. Okay, by me. If the wire breaks, I'll have you to break my fall. But if that's the way you no, want... No, 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 no. Um, second thought, I think I will go first. <laughs> Relax, I got you. I am quite able to do this by myself, so if you don't mind, please take your hand off my butt. Thank you. And take your eyeballs out of her skirt, <laughs> jerk. <laughs> Man, how rude is he? I can't believe he played Apollo on Battlestar Galactica. Kind of pervy for a hero. Just keep looking down, Apollo. <laughs> Tell you when it's safe to look. Perv. Ah. So all of a sudden, you're an expert on this place. Up to now, everything in this world either wants to hunt you or kill you. God knows what he wants to do. I want to thank you. Jeez, he speaks. He speaks English. No, I speak Vanyan. We can't stay here. The Varns will return. The Varns? He means those pint-sized midgets. What do you think? I think we better get out of here. But he's green.
Uh, thank you. Thank you for helping us. You've saved my life. Therefore, I'm in your debt. We have more forest to cross before we're safe. Here. Hey. Looks just like Avatar. Yeah, without James Cameron and a $2.5 billion budget. <laughs> Can you make a fire? Well, where I come from, we use matches. Sort of like, um... <laughs> It'll take too long to explain. Not from Vanya, but there is nowhere else except Vanya. Yet you speak Vanyan. I don't understand. I don't understand myself. to die. You okay? Yes, I'm fine, thank you. I think I'll just put some clothes on. Just remember, if you need any help. Yes, mm -hmm. thank you. Guess we owe you now. It hadn't been for that. Just what is that? Pod gun. <laughs> I see, these pods are full of a kind of gas. Can I have a look at that? Okay, don't pull apart. My debt to you is now paid. Hey, what? Hey, we need your help to find a guy named Hartman. He's the guy that got us into this mess. He's the only one that can get us out. Plumberry, food for when you travel. Hey, what happened? He said he squared his debt and he was off. Hey, everybody, what do you, Doc, what do you got there, boy? <laughs> Look at that. Inga, the prop mistress, was rather taken with the alien plants no, I, in the world. I would agree. She's wondering what the heck James Cameron spent all those billions on when you could just come up yep. with something like this and hold it in front of the camera. No, alien I agree. This is, this is nice. And the nice thing is, it's never a problem for having a picnic because there's always a utensil and a plate. And a, <laughs> you know what I mean? You always got something yeah. to eat off of. Eat right out you of know? the leaf. And you know what? I, and I feel like uh, it's always important to have something to eat off of. You know what I mean? Because yeah. that's what, you know what I'm saying? I like to, actually, like, can I look through that at the people for a minute? Will it distort me at all? Is it distorting <laughs> us? You look through yours and I'll look through mine. Okay, you look through yours, I'll look through mine. Hello, everyone! This is the horrible nature. It is an upsetting little world. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That thing it came back <laughs> oh, and actually sir. caught me in a bad so, way. Well, it's windy on some alien it, planets. Oh, so. it is. It is. So, All right, everybody, we are going to go enjoy more upsetting television, and we'll be back or what? He's here. My mystery day. Mystery day. Are you ready? date. 
the thrilling new Milton Bradley game of romance and mystery that's just for you. And you. And you. And you. Mystery date. Will you be ready for swimming? Or a dance? When you open the door, will your mystery date be a dream? Or a dud? Oh! Fun and surprises. That's mystery date. Remember, Milton Bradley makes the best games in the world. So, girls, open the door for your mystery date. Get mystery date. Hey, here we are again, everybody. It's the Ned the Dead Show. I'm Ned the Dead. This is Doc Moreau. How are you, Doc? It looks like that's growing on you. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> you should see uh, occasionally. Uh, I do have some things that actually grow. You know, there's a there's a horrible story uh, that I can tell you sometime, not on the air, however. You never about, do. He never no, does. I know. My stories, I never uh, I get to share. Thank you. That is <laughs> What is wrong with you? Who carries? What kind of a man? What? Well, dude, pull that out. What do you have that for? What is that? I know. Stop, see, friends. This is like what it would be like living with Bozo on a regular basis, you know? And I mean that in the nicest way, but seriously. You know, every once in a while, just in the middle of the night, he's jumping and squeaking and pulling out a little syringe with air in it. The syringe part is a little different than Bozo. I don't know that Bozo ever did that with the kids. I'm hoping not. You know, okay, kids, let's take let's see what it's like to do some skag, you know? <laughs> Only kidding. Only kidding. I promise I will never again ever say anything like that, ever. Hmm? Hartman couldn't possibly have gotten this far. Could he? Before I answer that, answer me one question. Huh. How long had you been here before I found you? Oh, about a, a day. Why? Well, I've been here for at least a week. A week? That doesn't make any sense. I know it doesn't. How long before you followed me into that, that force field or whatever it was? A couple of seconds, I guess. I don't know. It all happened so fast. Well, I hate to tell you this, but the way I figure it, a split second in our world takes a whole lot longer here. An apartment disappeared sometime before we did. He could have been in this world for at least, oh, who knows, maybe a year. A year? Well, he could be anywhere. That's a big place to look for a cookie scientist. Wait. What? I've seen that before. Where? In the lab. When Hartman disappeared, it was behind him. Terrific! You could do with the shame. Sorry. I'm not complaining. Oh! such a wildflower lost here in the wilderness. Especially one with hair the color of the sun. No! A 
didn't get far. You fools. Did you really believe that scum like you could take these away from me and replace me as warlord? No one can kill Cleel. No one! I, I beg you. He, he, he threatened me. Oh, so you are less guilty, are you coward? Very well. Arak, you will be taken to the fortress with us. As for you, hang him now. <laughs> please, I beg you. No, don't kill me, please. Skin of ivory, hair the color of the sun. Don't touch me. And she speaks when she should remain silent. What other surprises do you have for me, Wildflower? Let her go, you son of a or I'll kill you! Hey, he's one of those mean warlords. Oh. Bring her. If we're talking about the girl, Cleo the warlord took her. Where's he taking her? Uh, don't you know anything? Uh, to his fortress in the Dead Mountains. But no one gets in there, and I know what I'm talking about. And who the hell are you? My name's Malachi. Can I get up now? You take me there. First you act like a corpse. Now you want to be an idiot. I wouldn't expect you to do it for nothing. What is that? Is it gold? It's a watch. Not only gold, but it's got magical powers. It speaks. It warns the one who wears it if the thief is about. The devil it does. It also tells you Pacific time, mountain time, and the exact hour and minute in Hong Kong. By all that's smelly in my own shoe. <laughs> it's a deal. Yours. Once we reach Cleo's fortress. First off, you'll need a horse. Talking of horses, the best dealer in these mountains is my old friend Treat. Though you ought to know, he's got the sort of charm that would make a snake vomit. But he sells good horses. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
you'd play the master, huh? Don't you ever try to wear my boots again, vermin. This woman belongs to me, do you understand? I didn't know, I swear, I didn't know! Now you do. touched you, the skin would have been peeled from his screaming flesh because you would have been tainted by his foul embrace. I'd have crushed the petals of my little wildflower. from where we pick up the horses. Oh, about a day's ride. But the closer we get to Cleel's stronghold, the more your mind might change. Why? If the tales they tell are true, Cleel has a mighty sorcerer in his power. You felt the bite of his devil's smoke stick. How can you hope to beat a man who has the dark powers on his side? talking to me. Telling my companion how he had to stop and wish my old friend to eat a very merry day. I'll give me that horse manure, you curdled toad. Curdled toad? Is that horse manure, you old horse thief? Handmade tools, the like of which you'll never see again. A horse, my friend, and food and drink is all I ask in return. just giving away my livelihood. That's gratitude for you. I bring you all this way, introduce you to my friends. Him? And all I'm getting for my pains is the promise of that watch, which would be much safer in my keeping, knowing the type of thief that drinks in this place. Do you hear me? <laughs> what is it? That uh, man at the table over there. That's a green man. They're really weird. The men with him are traitors. They're trying to learn how he summons the wild horses. That's why they're filling them up with booze, but he won't tell them. Where are you off to now? Ah, uh, excuse me. Hi. Pour him another drink. Uh, I can still do with your help. What's going on? Now listen, friend. We're willing to pay for your secret. Look, the girl I was with, she's in deep trouble. Listen, Scathead, some... you're in trouble. I'm doing business with this man. Now you stay out of it. Look, I only want a quick word, OK? Just what do you think you're doing? Look, he helped me before. I'd like his help again, OK? I'm helping you this time, and nobody gets to share my reward. The way you do business, I can't afford you. Backsliding an old deal, is it? Friend, oh, I hope your skull's as thick as your hide. What are you feeding him? I'm getting upset. And when I get uh, upset, shut up. I told you not to intrude. Hey, look, hey, I'm sorry, I'm out of line. I hate people who interfere. Look, you ought to know that my friend here not only said you look like hogs in heat, 
but you smell like pigs in the swill bin. He did, did he? I never thought I'd say this, but thank God for John Saxon. Oh, you know, it's good to be the warlord. <laughs> Isn't it? it? It's good to be the warlord. It is. Now tell me, did the goose talk at the end of that segment, or was I just crazy? Oh, yeah. Was the goose actually? Yeah. Why does the goose it went, talk? <laughs> oh, stop that. Stop it. What kind of horrible stuff came out? Yeah. What is that? Do that again. There it is. Wait, see yeah. if there's any. Hold yeah, on. No, just she's, a couple she's, left. She's dry. Go ahead. Go ahead. And <laughs> She's dry. She's, she's dry. Do you dry. remember we were talking about Don't ever say the, she's the back end of the bladder? What? Yeah. The back end of the bladder. There yeah, was we, some disputing as to whether sure. it was pursed I remember or talking puckered. about it. No, I remember. Recall? It, and now it's been so actually now, covered, hasn't it? This is... Oh, no. 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 This is that, puckered. This is puckered. That is horrible. Okay. And uh, this is pursed. <laughs> so now you can have your choice. Of See you later, everybody. Or puckered. Now, how much would you pay? Yeah. Snow, rain, mud. Your car is bound to get dirty. So give the car a car wash, make it look like new. Watch it in the car wash that lets you see right through. Mr. Kelly's car wash, that's the one for me. Hey, Mr. Kelly, wax it beautifully. Drive up the ramp, hook the chain, it runs by battery. Clean, scrubs, and dries your car automatically. Mr. Kelly's automatic car wash, what a toy. From a hidden tank, fill overhead water tower, hook on car, throw switch, and automatically cars are wet down, scrubbed all over, and dried while you watch. Mr. Kelly's car wash comes with two late model cars, car wax, towels, sponges, and even a sign. Hey, Mr. Kelly, clean my car like new. Mr. Kelly's car wash lets you wax them too. Every boy wants a Remco toy, and so do girls. Mr. Kelly's car wash, that's the one for me. Hey everybody, we're back. I'll tell you, I like it pursed. I, yes. you know, if I have to yes. choose, I would okay. have the uh, the backside pursed. If pursed. You know what I mean? I definitely would. Pursed. You know, they use a term in there that I have not heard in a movie before: scat head. <laughs> Did you like that one? That was really yeah. listen, scat head. <laughs> That's kind of what a nice is that? One. Someone that likes jazz? I, I, don't, I, don't I think it is. What? <laughs> yeah. what? Yes, I think the scat singing. Yeah. Yeah, the scats. I've done some scat like singing. Globe In fact, Isn't every time I sing, people man. think scat. I don't know why that is. Every time I open my mouth, I believe uh, some people. Uh, I know uh, our friend uh, Mr. Heinrich back here clearly thinking that on occasion. You know what I'm saying? Very unusual character. <laughs> if anybody, if anybody, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that. Don't you think? I think there's a German term for scat singers. You know what I mean? Don't you think? Everything's better in German. <laughs> All right. Yes, it is. All right, everybody, we're going to hit on a small town Steve. He's got no scat in his life, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to tell us about life in the small town. It's Steve. He's a pursed man, too. Thanks a lot, fellas, and as always, I'm glad to be here. I'll tell you what, the gang down here at the shack is all a titter over the Seymour Melons Festival coming up. That melon judging thing is always an event worth keeping abreast of, and I'm sure that this year's event will be no exception. 
Melons will be judged on heft, roundness, and overall appeal. So if you think your melons stack up, send in a photo to Festive Melons, care of the Ned the Dead Show, and see if you just can't win this thing. And fellas, if you think your melons stack up, don't be shy, send in your photos too. Ned's been telling me that Doc's been bragging about his melons for weeks now, so be careful of the ringer. Back to you guys, and remember, keep your tip up and stay off those cracks. Hey everybody, we're back, Small Town Steve, once again. A little too good looking for my taste, you know what I'm saying? Oh, the ladies love him. Oh, I tell you what, have you ever been out with him? I mean, I was out here with him at the YMCA, and the dudes were all over him. Dude it was tell. crazy, it was crazy. Everybody loves him, men, women, everybody. Animals, he's very popular. <laughs> Wait! Let me write with you! Cleave the wall, or we'll pay much for that one! Why? Oh, uh, that's for me to know and you to find out! All I ask is the gold band he wears around his wrist. Fool, if Warlord Peel will pay gold for that one, so will the Nabu Fire Warriors, and they're a lot nearer! <laughs> a favor treat, old friend! Oh, anything. As long as you ride as far from here as possible. A shortcut! Is there a shortcut through to the main trail? Keep the river on your right. Now go. Ugh, you evil smelling shrimp. May you suffocate in your own fat, you tub of grease. <laughs> Always the little mother. My lord. Basque, bring the woman. Carefully. A hellcat might damage your manhood again. And don't dismiss the men. I want them to see what happens to those who plot against me. Hair, the color of the sun. What would you give to have hair the color of the sun, Cherie? She'd have the scalp of your pretty head. Then Shireen would sell her soul to be anything other than the half-breed slave that she is. Isn't that true, Shireen? Traitor, I hope the hanging of your accomplice weighs heavily on your conscience. You wanted me dead. Now you have the means in front of you to do it, coward. Right here in the open. For everybody to see that Cleel's law is just. Hard, but just. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still have the guts, coward? Or is that yellow streak down your back just for decoration?
threw them away. law is hard. Hard, but just. You call that justice? I call it murder. Perhaps a few hours in Vosk's degenerate arms might teach you a little respect. I don't think you'd like that. Oh. Vosk? Cager. No food, no water. She has the mark of evil in her eyes, Lord. She will bring you ill luck if she stays. No, my dear. If she stays, the ill luck will be yours. <laughs> Great trade. Drunken green weirdo for an undersized thief. Peter. You. I thought I got rid of you. Hope springs eternal. You're not only a thief, but an assassin as well. It isn't as bad as it looks. No, you can explain why you're sneaking up on me with a dagger in your hand. I came to warn you. Warn him what? Not to star in this movie. Too late now. <laughs> right. I did. And this is all the thanks I get. I don't believe this. I just don't believe this. I don't suppose you'd believe me if I tell you there's someone behind you. Oh, come on. <laughs> Just don't ask. We're being sold to the Nabu, who worship that rock of fire over there. We're in great danger. Keep your opinions to yourself, you drunk. Well, my friend, it's your lucky day. The Nabu honor you. They invite you to a contest with the Guardian of the Rock. If you win, you and your friends are free to go. No problem. Start the contest. Hey, hold on a damn minute. What the hell am I getting myself into? And if you refuse their invitation, they pull out your tongues by the roots, boil them, and then while you watch, eat them. Oh, uh, that's disgusting. And finally, you're given to the god of the rock. <laughs> and then you fry. <laughs> it's fun, isn't it? You never learn, do you? What do I tell them? Do you accept? Not your head, you idiot. Ah, shoot. <laughs> he desires the contest! Thanks a lot, you little twit.
crunching with the old bell sound, you know I what know. I mean? I'll tell you what, if I take it in the uh, the little the, the, the boys, I'd like to think, I would prefer, now here, for instance, why don't you go ahead and fake, fake hitting me, fake hitting me in the, <laughs> please, fake hitting me there, okay. go ahead. <laughs> See how that's, that's more like it, right? Yeah. That's the sound, that's because if you're really talking, I know, so again, they, it's not, you know, because theirs is like, ding, it's not a ding, it's a, <laughs> it's a horrible, I mean, that would be the sound, right? And this no. I've never understood because it, it, maybe it's supposed to be comedic or whatever. It's not comedic. You know, maybe it's, it's a boxing thing. thing. It, I don't, maybe it is a boxing thing. They ring the bell, you know? Oh, you know, I think it's so funny. Bell run. Inga has reinforced Dang. this thing to where you could run over it with an 18 wheeler. 16 wheeler, is that what it is? 18. <laughs> couple, throw a couple extra wheels on that baby. <laughs> I'm telling you, this baby is so reinforced. After the apocalypse, the next week's movie, they find the monkey bladder laying just as it was. <laughs> this is the Kellogg's naming scientist. Listen now as he tells us how he named the famous Kellogg's breakfast cereal. Uh, we were like feeding information into the name brain, you know. It's made by Kellogg's. Oh. It has the toastiest Kellogg's brand flakes, the best of the brand, mm. mixed with the best, the sweetest California... The brain wants to taste it. <laughs> the name brain names it Kellogg's Raisin Bran. What else? What else indeed says it better. The sweetest raisins and best bran flakes. Wow! Wow, 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 wow. Kellogg's best to you. Uh, that's Kellogg's Raisin Bran. Wow, 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 wow. You know, I can't really figure out that John Saxon. Now, he was in a lot of movies, wasn't he? Oh, a lot of, yeah, a lot of TV shows, a guest lot. starred all oh, over the place. Oh, yeah, Hollywood Squares. I think he was the center square at the one time. Bold ones. Except he actually killed mm -hmm. people. And unlike Paul Lynn, where he just made fun of him, John you know, Saxon actually rose up and killed people. He was in The $6 Million Dollar Man and The Bionic Woman. He was? How's that? He, yeah. was, he was in The Bionic Woman? Cool. Yeah. <laughs> what a lucky oh. sucker that guy was. <laughs> What's with the green? Oh, sorry about that. That's the bad guy. What's up humor. with the green man, anyway? Does he recycle? Right. I don't right, we exactly to recycle. He's the early. He no. is the early recycler, and he has no apparent role whatsoever other than to just stand by that's and dear. be. And imagine hey, someone you know. in face paint. That is so stupid. I mean, that some yeah. dumb dude would paint his face and just stand there. What yeah. the heck? It's what, the eighties. What is that? Yeah, all of? who would it's ever do that? That is so stupid. By the way, I'm a pucker I mean, man. Yeah, yeah, that you yeah. are. I know you are. Right, time to go, everybody. Hey. Sorcerer, all I hear from you are excuses. I need more powder for my guns. And you swore to show me an even greater power. Your Excellency, the slaves are not getting sufficient chemicals out of the mines for me to purify and distill. Get me enough and I'll show you what real power is. Then we will drive them night and day, but sorcerer? Do not disappoint me. I tire of waiting. Bosk! Say nothing, I beg of you. I'll find a way to see you. Drive the slaves even harder. The work goes too slow. And bring the woman in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
you made. Eat, damn you. Come. You see, I'm not the uh, barbarian you think I am. Plenty of fine food, bath, and uh, look, frock of exquisite thread. Water cools. Bathe now. What do you take me for? Why do you defy me? Do you enjoy making me angry? Because only the very stupid have no fear. I am afraid. Oh. Well, then why fight me? I mean, you're very strange. <laughs> Unlike any in this land. But, but you're the first woman who could rule by my side. Go to hell. Do you not offend me? Your life hangs by a thread. I could take you any time I wish. You understand? You will stay in the cage without any food or water until you crawl to me on your hands and knees and beg me to take you. Mr. Warlord, don't be scaring the monkey. I thought he was all big pimp and gangster, but scaring the monkey ain't cool. Don't do that. But he won. It isn't fair. True, maggot. But then the rules can change. You win some, you lose some. What can honest men do? What's going to happen now? Oh, that I can tell you. You're going to endure the pit of flame. <laughs> Once this stone plug is removed, the sacred liquid runs down this channel and uh, is set on fire by the rock. Back it comes and poof, we go up in smoke. What? We're sitting in a bath of oil. So when does the entertainment begin? Oh. Now! <laughs> Those pots, how many do they have left? Quick. The amber light. Just hope this works. Give or take a few seconds. Malachi. can talk to anything. His name is Kahar. Your woman saved his life some sons ago. You mean Kerry? I told him that you were her friend. He will go with us. I wouldn't think of going without him. The only trouble is we don't have horses. The sun is still high, Shireen. 
time enough to burn out your jealousy and pride, you should have chosen me, half-breed. But before the day is done, you'll have the answer to the riddle of this death pit. Why is it that when we leave our dead slaves here, they're all gone by the morning? You will be the only one who knows what happens when night falls. You mean you really can't do that? We'll soon find out. You know, I never really believed it till now. It saddens me to find you this way, Miss Madison. Well, get me out of here, then. Impossible. Cleel is not the kind of man to cross lightly. You've no doubt already encountered this particular brand of megalomania. But how did you get here? That damn machine of yours. How else? I came through about a second after Dan. Dan? Who's Dan? A friend. A friend Cleel murdered. I'm... I'm sorry to hear that. Then that means that the matter transmitter is still functioning. Then there is a way back. What are you doing here? With Cleo? Survival. This is a strange and violent land. Cleo almost had me slaving away in his mind, but... with a few scientific tricks, I persuaded him I was a sorcerer. You've possibly seen the pistols. You son. Then it was your guns that killed Dan. No. Cleel murdered your friend. And that lets you off, huh? So you can go and make more guns for them? Cleel is not a fool. So long as he is the only possessor of guns, who can stand against him? But he's also wise enough to know I can give him an even greater power. What have you done, Hartman? You must understand I've had to work with very primitive means at my disposal. Even so... I've managed to create a, a primitive but very potent equivalent to nitroglycerine. You're a maniac. You disappoint me. I would have thought you'd be far more realistic. Do as I have done. Humor him and survive. Cleel will rule this land with the power I can give him. Let Cleel rule. And the rest can go spit. I said it to him and I'll say it to you. Go to hell. All right, everybody, I uh, got a little something for you here that I, this is gonna be fun, I think. First of all, they used the monkey screaming trick. <laughs> and you know what I'm talking about, when the extreme violence is gonna occur, and they go, oh, and then they cut to, ah, and the monkey is just making those horrible monkey sounds. That is, I love that technique. All right, now here's, sorry, like that, but really crazy. Go ahead. That's just not good when you do that. All right, here's what's coming up. Every time, now, when the scene's coming up, there's gonna be scenes in a cave. Here's what I want you to all imagine. 
Every bit of what's going on in the cave, I want you to think, is occurring in a men's locker room. What's being said, the sounds that you hear, everything shot in a cave in the next segment. Once again, I want you to approach the next segment. Everything yeah. you see in a cave, I want you to imagine what's being said, yeah. and the noises that are being Ooh. made are in a men's locker Ooh. room. Good I'm game. Stop that. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> men's locker room. You hit me kind of hard back there <laughs> with my luck. I'm going to have a huge paw print bruise on my left buttock. That's going to play nice at home. Thanks. When we decided to get a testimonial for Scotty's, we went right to the top. Achoo! 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 That's what I like about a Scotty. It's a tree sneezer. Scotty's, the three sneezer. You know, I didn't mean, I didn't mean men's room, locker room. I meant a truck stop men's room. Oh, well then I take it back. <laughs> Thank you. There's nothing, I was trying to think of what I was thinking of what those sounds would most emulate. I thought, what's kind of the scariest oh, place that I could think of? Because of the truck, that, truck stop chili. Well, and, right. Well, no, those dudes got to go. Food. You know what I'm saying? I mean, when it's time, when you get in there, they have to go, right? Because I'm guessing that the, you know, the jugs of pee are full and all the rest of that stuff. You know what I mean? I kid, Why? I kid. People don't really do that. That's just wives' tale. You're they, back you know, on the bus now. Yeah, people don't really, they don't really fill up oh. big jugs of pee in those trucks i don't think do yeah they? i don't know i've heard that they do but i don't believe that because you know the truck drivers that i know they're all upstanding they're all cool i mean i've oh. never ever met a dude who drives truck for a living or lady there are of course some ladies they haven't been the salt of the earth kind people you know what i mean but when they gotta go baby they gotta go <laughs> well, you know what i'm saying that's understood oh yeah you eat what they eat you sit in that, that chair jumping you around yeah. like that there's times where you gotta go what's wrong he says he needs water. Water? Where? there in the trees what do you see there is something moving Look. that son of a He senses something evil, unclean. I'd say he's whiffing his own nasty armpits. Except your own should smell just fine. No, no, no. That's farts. <laughs> See? Is that all? I thought it was something serious. Uh, 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 uh.
I have to say, one nice thing about this world, it's Halloween all year <laughs> long, baby. <laughs> Where the hell are we? We're lost. I know we're lost. These caves go under Cleo's fortress. Your Excellency. What? If I may, the liquid is still in a highly volatile state. I swear I'd understand you better if you didn't have a tongue. Forgive me, Your Excellency. Perhaps if I were to show you what I've already created. Hmm. Have it, sorcerer. What is it? 
Clean air. This way. There's a boulder. Kahar! He's pushed. Push! 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 Where'd the big guy go? Who knows? We'll never get in. Look! we can do. We must find your woman. Yes, but where? I will show you the way. Suffer fate to death. We cannot stay here. Come. Yeah. Wave to him. Artman is here. He's Clil's sorcerer. He's what? He's he's made nitro. If Clil gets his hands on it. Where is he? I'll take you there. <laughs> oh, he's not dead. He's just going night night. How did you get here? 
don't understand. Who are these people? There's no time for question and answer games. Carrie, tie him up. And Hartman, any noise, and I'll use this. I wish you'd both listen to me. <laughs> Only a powerful ruler such as Cleo can provide the means to return to our own time. Can't you see that? No, and I don't intend to use Cleo for anything. No, stop! There's enough combustible material here to, to blow us all sky high. What's going on? Is he bring some kind of magic? Where's all the nitro? It's not here. You're lying, but I don't have the time to beat it out of you. So get your miserable hide out of here. Move it! I think you girls will give us any trouble. Hey, everybody, we're back here on the old Dead the Dead show. What do you think, Doc Moreau? I'm, I'm enjoying Kay Lenz, you know. Mm -hmm. She was one of the first ladies I remember seeing topless in a movie. Thank you, Cinemax. You never forget a thing like that. Cinemax. I remember when I was a young man, I was uh, going to EWGB, and I remember I thought it was called Cinema X. Ooh. I didn't think it was yeah. Cinemax. I thought it was Cinema X. That was cool. And I wanted it really bad <laughs> until I realized that it was nothing but topless shots of oh. Joan Collins <laughs> in that horrible movie, oh. The Stud and the BITC. You know that what, one, you know? what we had in my neighborhood What's before that? Cinemax? What's that? Was the woods behind the outdoor. <laughs> So, you try to ah. turn up the last row of speakers Thanks. real Thank loud. You so much. That is so sick. And then hide in the tree I line. Just, <laughs> hide in the tree line. See, I picture the sad fact of this, folks. This is so true. This is the scary part. I picture him with his pants and his ankles standing in the tree line at the outdoor. There's a horror movie for you. Forget, forget the flick. Look at that. I think I saw something. Nothing upsets a pickle lover more than a dull, soggy pickle. Pickle lovers always insist on the proud pickle. Heinz. No compromise, no shortcuts, no soggy pickle. Heinz stops at nothing to give you a pickle that tastes the way no other pickle does. Crisp, full-bodied, savory. That's what makes Heinz the proud pickle. If you were the best tasting pickle, wouldn't you be proud? Hey everybody, we're back at the old Nether Dead Show. Doc Tari, what's up, man? Oh, I was just thinking about telling the guy at the drive up what my evening was gonna consist of. Yeah, did you do that? That I was meeting a little man in an abandoned theater and we were gonna screen some flicks. <laughs> how'd that work for you? Whoa. How'd, yeah, how'd, how'd that, <laughs> say that again real loud, man. Whoa. 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 That's what the, uh, <laughs> even when you get our crew to go, whoa. Because <laughs> believe me, our crew has seen and heard a lot of things. Right, when they look at each other and go, whoa, you know that you've crossed over. What kind of a drive up was this? Could you share what you were, what were you getting? What, restaurant burgers. What, what kind know, of a restaurant? Fueling up. A restaurant? Fueling up. It, was it a, uh, a big chain or was a, it a, a the place where you get the popcorn? Was it the place where you yeah. get the popcorn? Was it? Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, that starts with T and ends with S yes. and has four letters. Yes. And there's some of them in the valley. That place, <laughs> that popcorn is mighty fine, by the way. You know what I'm saying? I know that was almost a plug, but not really. Hey, we own the show. Yeah. Tom's, baby. He goes to Tom's for the popcorn. They used to sponsor the show. Yeah, it's fine. It's Whatever all cool. it is, right? It's we family. don't get. The woman. What is it, Lassie? Girl with the hair the color of the sun has escaped? Freed by the ragtag band of rebels that killed you? <laughs> Why is there straw in the corners everywhere? No indoor plumbing. Ew. Down. Oh, Sherry. 
Your life was already finished. Bastard. Wow, he somehow shot around the green guy. He's a bastard, but he's good. <laughs> he's good. I must have missed you before. Ah, uh, hold it. Watch out, he's got chocolate syrup and, and no ice cream. No! No! no. Even me. That's better. Begging your excellency's pardon, I'm just a humble thief who'd like to make a deal. I don't make bargains. Ah, uh, but this is just a little deal. Oh, look, for pity's sake, just take it easy with that thing. Safe passage out of here. And a little something for my trouble. Now, that's not too much to ask, is it? For God's sake, quit while you're ahead. We'll just take the safe passage. What makes you think I'd let you all out of here alive? Okay, just me then. You little louse. And if I refuse? I let the magic out of the bottle, don't I? Then you'd simply be pouring away a decent flask of wine. Wine? I'm afraid so. I seem to recognize the flask you're holding. She told me it was the magic potion. Wine. seemed like a really good idea at the time. I was gonna get help and come back for you. I swear it. Cut out my heart if I tell a lie. Don't tempt me. <laughs> I need your help. I have nothing to say to you. Well, I have something to say to you, and you better listen. I'll blow the whistle on you, Arvin. You can't blackmail me. Oh, but you forget. He listens to me now. How else would I? What do you want? Believe it or not, I'm here to help you. What are you taking me for, Harbin? You may not know it, but it was I who persuaded Cleo to spare your lives. I cannot have your deaths on my conscience. I find that just a little hard to believe. I have no time to persuade you now. But you must give me your word that if I set you free, all of you will leave this place immediately. Yes, he gives his word. Where's Carrie? She's decided to stay. You're lying. Who knows what goes on in a woman's mind? With all men of the world, these things happen. Now, do I have your word? If you can't think for yourself, think of your friends. Yes, think of your friends. All right. All right, you got it. You, you, you gave me your word. This world has taught me one thing, Harmon. Trust no one. Now you and I are a little unfinished business to take care of. You hip? Leave us, leave us. I don't want to be disturbed. Agreement. Don't forget your friends are still in my power. I gave you their lives in return for your... ...cooperation. Open it, please. Very beautiful. Yes, isn't it? <laughs> it was the lucky charm of a warrior chieftain. He still believed that it would save his life, even as I pushed my sword between his ribs. 
You have a way of ruining everything. So I ruin everything, do I? Do not patronize me. I've offered you more than I've offered any woman. And you spit in my face as if I were the beggar. You go too far. I'm sorry. Thank you. Now, you will be careful how you handle those flasks. One slip, and there's enough nitro stored beneath the mountain to blow the entire fortress sky high. There comes a time when you have to live dangerously. You know what to do. Malachi? Yeah. Powder you make for Quill's guns, I need it. Now. I've got to move while it's still dark. I'll lay enough fuse to make this place blow in about. Malachi, give me back my watch. <laughs> Take him with you. Everybody, we're back on the Ned the Dead show. Hey, it's Doc Rowe. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no isn't, there, I've had it, my isn't that a nice little number K lens is wearing? Finally, mm. Warlord, you got some taste. I'll tell you what, yeah. K lens, my friend. Oh, yeah. I tell you. Yeah. Now, how about that? We're talking about the relative merits here about the Green Man. Yeah. And what's up with that? I know he's like the movie's Jar Jar. Well, I guess. you know, I mean, huh? it's like, huh? well, it's like yeah. you have, uh, you know, you're trying to figure out what to do. Well, we got to bring him in. Well, why? Yeah. Well, we'll just paint him green, and then it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know what I mean? I can picture. He walks onto the set. And they say, no, no, we said green screen. Green screen, not green dean. You know what I mean? I mean, a guy, wow. I don't get that part. I don't understand. You know what? Well, I can see how three buckets of paint and the movie's blowing its budget. Well, I can see, you know, in a sense, I can see coming out here wearing different shades of whatever color. I mean, I wouldn't mind that. I, you know, I've done this in this same dumb suit for the last 30 years or whatever. Yeah. I can see having a little color or whatever. You know what I mean? Look like John Boehner. <laughs> ha! Ha! Sit under the sun for a couple of months months and come out looking like John Boehner to be all right. Hey, Charlie. Oh, what's with the dark glasses? I never seen a tuna in dark glasses. You don't see tunas with cigars every day, either. Oh, come on. What's with the shades? I'm going up to the ciphers for a look around. Like, the sun hides my eyes, you know? Ooh, what's up there? A star kiss tuna scout. A star kiss tuna scout? Hey, how about if I go along? Forget it, kid. You'll never even notice you. Oh, why not? You never make the weight. Besides, it ain't what you are, it's who you know that counts. You gotta have connections. You got connections? My brother-in-law. Star kiss took him last month. I'm sure he put in a weight for me. Yeah, what I tell you? They sent for me. All right, cut the comedy. Sorry, Charlie. Only the best tuna get to be Starkist. Insist on Starkist. Tell him Charlie sent you. You know, you think times are hard now, oh. that the gap between the rich and the poor is oh. getting larger, but oh. in, in, the, in, the, in the lost universe here, there's the warlord, and then there's everybody else. <laughs> oh, that is, that is no that's doubt. That's an extreme gap right no, there. No, I'll tell you what, you know, if I want to be... Keep you know, that in mind. The thought of being the warlord is not the worst thing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, it's a pretty decent position. And, I mean, he's actually softening a little to the point, you know, it's not a bad place to be. I mean, I don't think I could cause... I don't want to hurt anyone, you know what I mean? I'm not big on the whole violence thing, but to rule your world uh, in every way and to basically be yeah. catered to in every sense, rather than in no sense... <laughs> But, I mean, have you ever you been might catered to in any way? Toy. Have you ever been catered to in any way in your life? A in bit. Any? Have yes. you? Inga's very kind to me. Oh, Especially listen. when she comes up with the props for the show. Oh, I bet. You know, when you tested the monkey bladder that. together. I'd, uh, I'd tell you what. <laughs> you probably had to call the authorities <laughs> when you did that. Hey, uh, Doc, take a shower. I've got a monkey bladder for you. <laughs>
told you I didn't want to be disturbed. Please, I'd like some more wine. Very well. Quickly. I said, drop it. I'm warning you. You take one more step and I'll blow your damn head off. Conceited bastard. Ah. That's Tony. Dan. Dan. Come on. Dan, please. Get up. Get the sword. Get the sword. The sword. Come on. Wait. Wait, I gotta get the sword. That invisible doorway, Doc. It's hopeless. Don't you understand? The chances of finding the things I transmitted are ten million to one. Well, then I suggest we start looking. Gold. What have you found? Just some cast-off bauble with strange markings on it. Markings? Scribbling. How do I know? I can't read. Thank you. That's it! That's it! Where'd you find this? gone? What about the war?
last crappy special I effect, and I remember, it's yeah, over. I like they used the Rapido punch. I love that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the uh, amazing Rapido punch. You know, as an editor, uh, I've done some editing in my life, and you know, I've never really, I don't really stoop to the Rapido punch. You know, I don't like the, yeah. I don't like the, you know, it's that's a not, cop out. It's think? A, I think it's a huge cop yeah. out. I do. All right, everybody, we gotta get on out of here. We love you, need you, thank you. We'll see you next week. It's the Dead the Dead Show. It's Doc Burrow, my favorite friend. Turn and talk to me, my friend. Thanks for watching Ned the Dead and Doc Moreau. Remember to check out their stuff at nedthedead.com. Hey.